Curves, a tool a lot of beginner photographers are frequently confused with. It's found in almost every photo editor and it's for sure the most valuable asset you want to master to improve your editing skills. Hi everyone, what's going on? Today a quick digestible tutorial on how to use more effectively the Curve tool in Capture One and bring your images to the next level. I guide you through some landscape images showing some of my favorite applications of the RGB and Luma Curve and how to avoid potential mistakes on using it. I'm not gonna talk about colors, curves is a huge topic, and for this episode I would rather prefer staying focused just on how to manipulate brightness and contrast. Alright, let's dive in. The curve is a really fantastic place, and in Capture One there are two different types of curves, and it's one of the main aspects that differentiates Capture One from other software. It has the RGB curve, which changes the contrast of the image, affecting also the color saturation, and the Luma curve that only changes the density of the image while keeping the hue and saturation of the colors untouched. The curve tool gives you the ability to manipulate the tonal range of an image, and it's usually one of the most difficult commands to get to grips with. But don't be afraid, after you have spent a little time experimenting, Curves quickly becomes the go-to tool for many tonal tweaks. As you can see in terms of interface, the Curve tool has two axes, horizontal and vertical. Think of the horizontal axis as a scale from dark tones to light tones, a sort of graphical representation of all the shades you could have in your image. It doesn't mean that you actually have the full range in your picture. There is a histogram overlay in the background that tells exactly which shades are present in your photo. The bigger it is, the more space a specific shade takes. So, for instance, the bottom part of this image that's in shadow takes a big part of the frame, and therefore you have a big column on this range of shades. That's the same for the brightest part of the image and the midtones. Bear in mind that the Curves histogram doesn't show how the tonal changes as we apply the curve adjustments. There is a sort of a hierarchy in the exposure module that regulates the order in which the different panels are related to each other and the sequence the adjustments are applied. Just for the sake of demonstration, if I make some adjustments to the levels or HDR panel or whatever, we can see the histogram changes. It doesn't happen when we tweak just the curve. So be aware of that. And then we have the vertical axis, which is the brightness output. So it represents the brightness level after the adjustments of a specific area of our image. Okay, how to manipulate the tonal levels? This curve tool is commonly called the point curve. To adjust an area of an image, we actually need to click over this straight line in order to create an edit point we can move around, up and down, and left and right. By dragging the point up, you will lighten the image at those tones and surrounding tones. Drag down and you will see the image darken at the tones around your point. You can add as many points as you want and you just need to click, hold down and drag the dot to the desired position. It's important where you place a pointer as this determines which part of the tonal range you wish to alter. Let's start with a dead simple example. Here we have five different shades of gray with a pure black square on the left and an almost white square on the right. These squares represent, uh, let's say, our dynamic range in a very simplified way. I didn't use pure white, otherwise we wouldn't be able to see any variation as we adjust the curve. Each square is represented on the histogram with a spike. Now, I'm gonna move the curve tool and I'm gonna click over this spike and drag the curve up. As you can see, we are literally creating a curve. That's actually why it's called curve and we are brightening the second square in our reference image, making it almost identical to the third one. We can also do the same thing, clicking over the third spike and dragging the curve down to darken the entire image till reaching a tonal value very similar to the second square. As you notice, the adjustment curve is gonna change the near tones and not just the specific value. So in a real scenario, we would need to add multiple adjustment points to tweak the curve more selectively. Here on the bottom, we have got a couple of different controls. On the left, we have got a little square dot to adjust the black point, and this one on the top right is the white point. Dragging the black point to the right, basically, what I'm telling to the image is that anything to the left of this point is gonna be black. So, as I drag this from the left to the right, more of my image is turning black. If I drag the white point here at the top from the right to the left, is the opposite. So anything to the right uh, to this point will become completely white. We can also go up 
and down. If I take our black point and drag this up, what that's gonna do, it's gonna make the darkest pixel of my image gray. We can go the same with uh, the white point, making it gray instead of white. Before moving forward, I wanna give you a bunch of useful tips. To apply tiny, small adjustments to the curve, you can click to create a point and then use the arrow key to move it. A single arrow click moves one point while holding the shift key down as well, it moves it to 10 points. To remove any control points, you just need to select it, hold down click, and drag it outside the curve panel or right click over the dot and then remove selected or just hit the delete keyboard key. Okay, that being said, after this general overview, curves is really about contrast. Contrast defines the relationship between the tones in your photo. And it's really the difference between bright and dark you have uh, in any area of your picture. A high contrast image will, will generally have strong shadows and highlights uh, with a lot of saturation, whereas low contrast photos will look flatter. The most common example that people often do to add contrast uh, is a simple so-called S-curve. They will come about uh, here and add uh, a point right here, and a second one right about here often lifting the highlights a little bit while dipping the shadows uh, ever so slightly, giving this uh, a gentle ashy shape. After the adjustment, uh, if the image is still a little dark, you might add a third point to anchor the mid-tones like so. And most of the time, that seems to be the only use. That's it. You would think so, but not so much. Okay, we can also move the black and white point in uh, remapping the darkest and lightest values in the tonal range and consequentially increasing the contrast and color saturation. You can activate the exposure warning in Capture One with the shortcut key Command E to check if you are crushing the blacks or blowing out the highlights. You can also lift up the black point to change the zero black value to a higher brightness level to decrease the contrast and get the, the quite popular faded, washed out, thin look to the image. A similar adjustment can be done to the white point to decrease its value to fade the highlights areas as well. In general, as steeper is the line, as much contrast we are gonna have in a specific tonal range. So a steeper line adds more contrast and a shallower line decreases contrast. The ability to manipulate this line is far more than this. And now we are gonna see more example to learn how to make the most of this powerful tool. Here we have a low contrast image and our goal is to increase the contrast using curves. But instead of using the basic S shape, I want to show you how I like to tackle these kinds of images, creating a more intricate curve. First thing first, we want to analyze the levels of brightness in the image. And just moving the mouse over the image, the curve panel provides a vertical orange line that indicates the brightness level of the area we are moving over. What we want to do is to identify the area we want to improve in terms of contrast. In this case, we want to increase uh, the contrast between these rocks uh, and these smooth levels uh, in the squeeze slope. If you draw a basic uh, uh, S-curve, just raising up uh, this uh, generic part of the highlights uh, and decreasing the shadows, uh, the result is nicer, but it's not enough for my liking. And uh, the adjustment is not targeted to the image content. This is a great example of why a simple S-curve is not always the best solution. We can definitely achieve a better result. So we are gonna reset the curve and we are gonna set the black and white points dragging the two respective dots. And we can already see a nice contrast improvement and also an increase in colors saturation. Now we are gonna add a few anchor points. I'm gonna grab this eye drop tool that allows us to add a control point to the curve automatically based on the, the tonal value of a specific zone in the image. Now we're gonna add an anchor point here on the screen slope, another one on this rock. So our goal is to increase the distance in terms of brightness values between these two elements, okay? Let's start increasing the brightness here, dragging up this dot like so, and we are immediately seeing an increment of the contrast. Let's bring down this one to add even more contrast, but we are losing details on this area in the shadows. You might think uh, to add uh, an extra point uh, right between the two anchor points uh, and slightly increase uh, the brightness. But doing so, we are flattening the curve. So that means uh, we are losing details. 
Okay, whenever you have a, a horizontal flat line, that means uh, you are flattening details. Some areas of the image start having uh, the same tonal value and the photo starts to look blotchy. So it's very important to avoid flat horizontal lines in your curves, uh, at least uh, when you are not creating it on purpose. Now, how can we solve the problem? Here is the trick. To mitigate the issue of a flat curve and losing details, we need to add an extra anchor point right after this one. Just when the mouse changes its pointer icon, right there. And now what we want to do is to straighten up the curve like so. In this way, we can keep the localized contrast adjustment without crashing the shadows too much. We still have enough room to improve the contrast even more in this rock wall, adding another anchor point here and then dragging it down just a tiny bit here we go how cool is that if you like it you can add one last dot at the top of the curve to add even more punchiness to the clouds more or less like that let me show you the before and after this is the before absolutely flat lifeless image and this is a after the curve adjustments. Much crunchier, crispier, a really dramatic and contrasty shot. That's an amazing result just using the curve panel, isn't it? Great, now I want to show you very quickly the same image adjusted with the Luma curve. As we introduced at the beginning, the Luma curve works basically in the same way as the RGB curve, but without altering the colors. It works only on luminosity levels. Let's jump back for a second to the previous image with squares, but instead of using the grid squares, now we are gonna use a colored square. As I move the control point on the RGB curve, in addition to the brightness variation, we also have an increase in saturation. Adjusting the same image using the Luma curve, we are gonna tweak the brightness, but without changing the colors. No variation in terms of hue and saturation. For example, take a look at this colorful image. I applied the same adjustments. On the left, we have got the edited version using the RGB curve, and on the right, using the Luma curve. And as you can see, in the Luma version, the skin tones are very pleasant and well controlled. Whereas on the RGB version, the skin is uh, quite oversaturated with strong reds uh, and is way over the top. Okay, let's move forward to the next image. We're gonna use this moody, foggy shot. Here we want to increase the contrast on the water to emphasize the texture, but we also want to keep a decent amount of brightness here on the bottom part of the frame to not lose the figure in the dark. First thing first, we need to adjust the global contrast uh, just by using the curve. So we are gonna set the white point by dragging this dot right about there. We don't want to touch the black point uh, since uh, I think we already have pretty deep shadows. The shot looks better. Now, in order to create the contrast uh, on the waterfall, we are gonna grab uh, the eyedropper tool and click uh, on the brightest area about here. And I I'm gonna reduce the brightness uh, a tiny bit just to recover some highlight details. At the same time, we decrease the brightness uh, of the entire image, but don't worry. What we wanna do is to increase the difference in the brightness values inside the waterfall elements. And to do so, we need to find a, a convenient area where to add another control point to steepen the curve, and so to add the local contrast. I think this area works pretty well. Now we're gonna add a point and drag down the curve right there. Okay, the contrast went up and here the water is much punchier. As a downside, we start losing detail in the shadow, so we need to rebalance the shadow's highlights ratio by increasing this area of the histogram. Like in the previous example, we are gonna move now the mouse over this dot and we are gonna add an extra point right below it to straighten back the curve. This allows recovering the shadow details without losing too much contrast on the water. We can improve the contrast even more by placing an additional control point right about here and a second one about, about here. So we can increase the contrast between these two tonal shades. I'm gonna bring down this point, like so. And uh, here we are. We improved the contrast massively with no flat uh, segments in the curve. And again, an absolutely great result for such small tweaks. Here is the before and uh, here is the after. Before and after. 
sweet. As a final example, I want to show you how to use curves to decrease contrast. Here we have got a very high contrast image, deep shadows with a few details, uh, almost a silhouette shot. Bear in mind, the adjustments uh, we are going to see are just for a demonstration purpose. And on this shot, uh, I choose the exposure in camera to get exactly this silhouette effect. So what we are going to do in Capture One is not going to be uh, the more appropriate edit for the image, but it's just to see how to use curves to decrease contrast. Okay, how can we approach a photo like this? It's basically the same process we have already seen, but reversed. What's the area we want to brighten up? Obviously, is this uh, shadowy area here on the bottom of the frame. Great, we're gonna add a control point right about uh, in this zone, targeting these lighter rock tones uh, where we have some detail. And now we're gonna increase the brightness uh, till about, uh, about here. As you can see, uh, we got a ton of details back, but we blew out the sky and the mountains in the background. So what we wanna do is to add a control point right next to this one and drag down the curve to get these kind of linear shape. And doing so, we are able to get back the midtones and highlights. That's perfect. From here, we might want to increase the contrast in the bright background. So I'm going to add a point here on the clouds and another one here to add a bit more separation. Here it is. As always, let's take a look at the before and after. This is the before and after. Curves are an amazing tool uh, you have to master. You can do so much stuff using them, and in this video, we just scratched the surface. Uh, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Aside from the Luma Curve, uh, everything we saw in this video is applicable to any other software that has uh, the regular RGB Curve tool. Let me know in the comment section if you want to see more tutorial about curves uh, here on the channel. Actually, I published another video here on YouTube about uh, a really cool technique I frequently use uh, to improve contrast. I'll leave the link uh, right here, so check it out. Anyway, if you have any questions, drop me a comment down below, give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if it gets a bit of value. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!